What we have here is uh, a cabinet that's been constructed to meet the uh, North American standard for electrical control assemblies, UL508A. Uh, this is a demonstration panel. Uh, it's got lots of ingredients in it that you would typically see in such a control cabinet. So what I'm going to do is open the door and show you what's inside. So first of all, I have to switch off the isolator. Okay, so the first thing you might notice is this floret, this interlocking section on the inside that you wouldn't typically see on a European style isolating switch. This is the main switch for the cabinet, it's to UL489 and this handle is, we call it an NFPA handle and it allows you to switch the isolator on and off from within the cabinet but the regulations say that it mustn't involve the use of an additional tool and it must involve a deliberate action on behalf of the person doing the switching. So this handle will freely rotate but if I understand how it works I just pull it forward and now I can turn the switch on turn it back off again. If I let go then it becomes safe again. So that's, if you're using a rotary isolator in this kind of assembly you have to consider that kind of handle is a requirement. In this top section here, what we've got is a variety of motor starters and feeders. These are uh, type E or F motor starter assemblies, so they're known as um, self-protected motor controllers in the uh, North American market. So circuit breaker, contactor, overload, or just a motor protective circuit breaker and a contactor. Um, interesting uh, differentiation here. In Europe we'd call all of these things motor protective circuit breakers. We'd say that's a magnetic only one and that's a thermal magnetic one. In the US market a thermal magnetic device is known as a motor protective circuit breaker. A magnetic only device is known as a motor circuit protector. Those are things that you'll hear quoted quite often. So here all mounted on a 141A bus bar system. That's a 60 millimeter sen center um, bus bar system so that again meets the UL requirements here we've got a variable speed drive we've got a soft start we've got a fuse switch using J type fuses we've got a small load feeder using fuses and here we've got a circuit baker perhaps feeding an external circuit with a transformer something like that okay if we move on to the second section here you'll see this is far more typical of a European style um, control cabinet the sort of thing you're more familiar with again main switch has got this NFPA style handle on it so that you can operate it with the door open um, without additional tools. This time it's on a switch fuse unit so it's a switch fuse with uh, J style American fuses in it. Again we've got these self protecting motor controllers type E and F so motor protective circuit breakers and contactors and we've got a few fuses this time all assembled onto a dim rail, although dim rail is a European idea, perfectly acceptable in the UL world, as long as it's used to the appropriate standard. You might notice on the end this miniature circuit breaker is, looks a bit unusual, it's a 489 miniature circuit breaker so it meets the UL 489, which means it can be used in branch and feeder circuits. Standard European style miniature circuit breakers probably best avoided but certainly can't be used in branch or feeder circuits it's got to be a UL489 breaker. If we move on to this third section these are mainly control circuit devices but we've also got down here um, a micro PLC I mentioned this circuit breaker you can see that it's got yellow cables that's because it's taking an external supply at 110 volts here protecting it and then feeding this domestic, domestic style US socket here so if you've got someone coming in to do some programming on the micro then they can plug the laptop in there, it's convenient for them. But the wire colours are all covered by UL508A. If you look into the standard then there's a, there's a colour code that tells you which cable to use for which application. One other interesting thing, there are a couple of power supply units in this section. This one is a class 2 power supply which means it can be used in limited energy applications at 24 volts DC. In fact any voltage up to 40 volts but in this case 24 volts DC and it's got a limited output of 100 VA so the devices that are connected downstream of that don't have to be considered for the UL standard they can be proximity switches, photo cells, things like that but because they're in that environment downstream of this power supply class 2 power supply they don't need to be considered so very difficult to give you much more information about uh, meeting North American standards in such a, such a short video. If you want to know more, if you go to uh, rockwellautomation.com, 
and search on North American Standards, then you'll find more videos, you'll find more information, publications and details of where we are holding one day seminars that you can attend and, and learn some more.